more than this place when you grab your neighbor by the hand. Grab your worshiping neighbor by the hand and be prepared to enter into the word of the Lord. How blessed we are to have made it to the house of the Lord one more time. How blessed we are to hold the hand of a miracle. You may not know it, but you're holding the hand of someone who knows what it means to have weathered life storms. You're holding the hand of a storm survivor. You're holding the hand of one of God's most precious beings. Father God, we thank you now for the hand that we're holding and we acknowledge you for being God. But we realize, Lord, that you are God and beside you there is none other. We thank you, God, because through many dangers, toils, and snares, you have blessed us to come to this place of worship. And now, God, we are sitting in a seat of expectation. For, God, we need to hear from you. We pray now, God, that you would come and sit with us just for a little while. And, God, I pray now, God, as I'm holding my worshiping neighbor's hand. God, you know all about their circumstance. God, you know all about their situation. You saw them late in the midnight hour when they were crying out to you. So God, my master, I pray this morning that as I squeeze their hand, they would be reminded that you are right by their side. God, as I squeeze their hand, they would be reminded every need they have that you are going to supply. As I squeeze their hand, they would be reminded that after all they've been through, after all the tactics and after all the enemy tried to do, that they are still here. So God, we're not going to wait until the battle is over. But even in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the confusion, in the midst of the hurt, in the midst of the disappointment, we're still going to lift up your name. Thank you now. As you release that David's hand, come on and give God your best praise. Come on and give him your best praise. Come on for 15 seconds. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to give God glory. Come on, come on, open up your mouth and give God glory. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, take a good look at me. Because when I leave here, I'm not leaving the same way. If you believe it, come on and give it praise. Yeah. Yeah. Grab your Bibles. We can grab your Bibles as you remain standing. We can grab your Bibles. Certainly, amen. We dare not be before you long. Amen. We greet you in the name of He who was before there was and will be when was and where I'm gone. The name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one that died and now sits on the right hand of the Father, uh, making intercession for us. Come on, celebrate my spiritual father. Amen. The eminent apostle, Dr. William Richard Correll, Jr. Come on, let's bless God for the man of God. God has been good to this man of God. Amen. We are so thankful for all the wisdom that he's constantly pouring into God's people. Amen. And when you have a leader that's going somewhere, it's easy. You can't follow any and everybody. The Bible says the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. But certainly uh, this prolific Ah, this prolific prognosticator of the gospel, a politician in his own right. Ah, he's a preaching somebody. Yes. Amen. I said he is a preaching somebody. Yes. Yes. Amen. I am wrong to love this man of God. And sometimes when you can't talk to nobody else, it's good to know you've got a pastor you can talk to. Amen. Amen. And certainly to the fragrance of the house. Amen. The fragrance of the house. Amen. 
Beloved, even though you cannot see God move 
moving on your behalf right now, you have to have enough faith in God. Even though I don't see it, I don't feel it, but I believe God is working behind the scenes right now for my good. And I wonder if there's anybody in here that that's where you are in your walk with God. Even though things are not going according to my plan, it's not going according to the way I wrote it down, it's not going according to the way I thought it was, but I believe God, that God has not brought me this far to leave me now. And I want to encourage somebody that the reason you got to trust God, even when you cannot trace God, is because God has a divine purpose over your life. And that's why when the enemy tries to come in like a flood, and when the enemy tries to do everything he can to take you out, the reason it is not going to work is because there is a mandate over your life. Can you touch your neighbor and say, I've got a mandate over my life. And because God has a mandate and because God has a purpose over your life, it is not predicated upon what your neighbor sees in you. A lot of times we become discouraged because we begin to want to become accepted by people. We begin to want people to put their stamp of approval on us. But I'm to the point now in my relationship with God that I'm believing what God has for me, it is for me. In other words, it does not matter how many doors I close in my face. It does not matter how many times my bank accounts hit zero. It does not matter how many times the application is not approved. But I've got enough faith in God that says that he that has begun a good work in me is able to complete it. Can you just touch your neighbor and say you just might as well hang around a little while because even though I'm going through a storm right now, trouble don't last all the way. I wonder if there's anybody in here that you've got enough faith in God today that I'm going to learn how not to complain about the rain, but I'm going to learn how to dance in the middle of the rain. I, I want to talk to somebody because right now there are some of us who are going through a storm right now. There are some of us, even though we know what God has said concerning us, the reality of our life situation is right now we're in a storm. That your neighbor say, don't you miss this? Right now uh, we're in a storm. But can I tell you something about a storm? I've never seen a storm that did not pass. And I want to encourage somebody right here. You may be in the midst of a storm right now, but I wish I had about six people that could just lift your hands in the air and decree and declare the storm is passing over. Hallelujah. I want to let you know that trouble don't last all day. And every now and then God will send some storm just to show you that he can see you through the storm. You ought to touch your neighbor and say, I'm coming out of this. I wish I had a real church in here. I feel the Holy Ghost. Can you just grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I may be in the storm, but sooner or later I'm coming out of the storm. Let me help you here. The only person who does not like the storm. See, the problem with us is now we have gotten to the place where we don't appreciate the storm. Uh -huh. We don't appreciate the storm. We don't appreciate the rain. Watch this. The only person who does not appreciate rain is someone who has not sown any seeds. Y'all let your help me here. Every now and then when it's raining in my life, I begin to say, Lord, I thank you for the rain because the only way the seed can grow is every now and then it has to have some rain. And some of y'all are wondering right now why you got so much pouring down on you. But God said, the only thing I'm doing is fertilizing your future. The only thing I'm doing is fertilizing your future. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, your future looks great. Uh -huh, y'all be seated. I want to let you know, they left me for day. But purpose, somebody shout purpose. Kept me alive. At least I hold you too long, we find ourselves in uh, the book of Daniel. In Daniel, now we find this parable comes to our forefront about a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. It is this king now that has uh, made a statue and he sat it in the providence of Babylon. And the word went out that whatever time you hear the music, y'all know the story, that whatever time you hear the music, you have to bow down and uh, worship this false golden image. My brothers and sisters, the same picture is painted in our day-to-day -day life. The picture that is painted in our day-to-day -day life is are we going to bow down to man? Y'all 
may be healthy. Are we going to stand up for God? Are we going to bow down to popularity? Mm -hmm. Are we going to stand for God? Are we going to bow down to social acceptance? Are we going to stand for God? Are we going to bow down to society? Or are we going to stand for God? Are we going to bow down for go along to get along? Or are we going to stand for God? Are we going to bow down to sin? Or are we going to stand for God? Are we going to bow down for a church full? Or are we going to stand for God? Are we going to bow down for an offering and an honorarium? Or are we going to stand for God? Are we going to bow down for being accepted by no good Negroes? Stand for God. Stand for God. Oh, you gonna fall to man? Notice now. Notice now. Y'all sit down. I'm about to get there. Notice now. The text said now that the king signed the decree. He sent the word out that whatever time you hear the music, you are to bow down and worship this false image. Notice now, you got to understand when you got purpose over your life. First of all, I got three points. First of all, when you have purpose over your life, you got to understand that you can't be like everybody else. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, when you have purpose, somebody shout purpose. Yeah. When you have purpose over your life, you cannot be like everybody else. Notice now, when God made you, he did not make you a duplicate. Mm -hmm. He didn't make you a replica. Nor did he make you an imitation. But God made you an original. He said, be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice now, we are not called to be conformers. But we are called to be transformers. Y'all ain't going to help me up in this house. We are not called to be conformed. But we are called to transform. In other words, you with your bad attitude. I ain't studying you with you always drinking on some haterade. But the only thing I'm trying to do in this season is please the Lord. And that means that I gotta go all by myself. If Pookie, Ray Ray, and Shaniqua don't want to go, that means I'll go. And I gotta go all by myself. Touch your neighbor say, I'm gonna come, I'm a transformer. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm a transformer. In other words, we gotta understand the church, the church, somebody say the church. The church cannot be influenced by the crowd. Come on, come 